But just think back to last week, week before, maybe a couple of months ago, any time that you've had a bad run at it mm -hmm. <laughs> in sales. And what was your thought process during that, during that stint of time? Like, what were you like, start to think about what you were thinking about during that time mm -hmm. when you had that bad day, did you start saying things to yourself? Like, man, every time I blank and man, this always blank and just kind of fill in those gaps and thinking like, was I genuinely negative or optimistic about what was going on during yep. that time. And of course you had another bad day. And of course that turned into a bad week, which turned into a bad month, which literally can destroy someone's career. Sure. Unless you figure out a way to correct it. What's up, everybody? Welcome What's to up? the Sales Wolves Podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris. And I am Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh. 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 <laughs> we are going to be your radio show host today. <laughs> Sweet. This is episode 123 of the Sales Wolves one, two, Podcast. One, two, and, one, two, three. Uh, it's kind of significant. One, two, three. It's very, one, very. One, two, three. Very. Check, baby. Check, baby. We want to talk about... Um, a significant topic to us. Um, Tyler has a significant issue with it, <laughs> and so he's going to talk most of the time. <laughs> um, Joseph wants to talk about, and I'm just here. I'll start complaining. <laughs> I will complain this whole time. The topic is complaining. Yes. Complaining. Like, I feel like this is in my nose. Complaining. Oh, that's better. I feel better now. All right. So what was the the my, thought that you my had mic this morning? Because you came in, you were, and I don't even think you knew we were recording today. But you're like, man, I got this idea for a podcast. Yeah, it. Well, I was like, the podcast gods have just we shined been, down on me. Yes, that we've been <laughs> talking about. Um, we've been talking about um, the secret, and we've yeah. been talking. We've re, we're reading that again, and and by Rhonda Burns, and and just an incredible book. Um, and talking about how you set your intentions, gratitude is a is the language of the universe, and mm -hmm. and and love, and and then you add the work into it, and you just see and magical things happen. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And so, from the opposite perspective, I don't think people understand what ha what happens. Um, the guy, I could sit here and complain about this microphone right now, mm -hmm. and the universe will answer me by causing it to stop working. Sure. And then I will or wish cause for the you days. to be in more situations where you have to be in front of a microphone, like demanding, like, right. Like, we're going to need you to talk tomorrow. Yes. Or we're going to need you to do something tomorrow that revolves a microphone. And all of a sudden now microphones is like the center of your world. Right. I, I, I went on a, um, like camping trip type type trip. Right. With, and we, we were going to be on the water some and we had a boat and I was, I was actually complaining about the boat. It was, it was, not water worthy in my opinion <laughs> had me a little nervous um especially because there was going to be balligators in yeah. the water and i wanted to not be in the water right well so i, so I complained fair. about the boat and when we got it in the water guess what didn't work the boat the boat the motor. the motor motor quit working and i was like great so that put us a day behind on our camping trip and we found another motor i mean the stars aligned for us to find another motor, but it took us all day. We got the motor in, we're on our way. And we had about five miles on the water before we got to where we were camping. And we decided to do it at midnight <laughs> to, to take the trip with nothing but headlamps, no flashlights. And I was complaining, it was slow going. Like it was gonna take us about an hour, right? Well, about half was going to take us about 45 minutes, about mm -hmm. halfway into the trip, the motor that I was complaining about going slow, this is the second time I hadn't learned my lesson, I was complaining and, and, and the universe goes, cool, motor goes to half power. <laughs> now we're going three miles an hour <laughs> and it takes us an hour, 15 hour and 20, 30 minutes to get to where we're going. So I'm like, great. And you can only reach this camping spot twice a day during high tides. That's why we went at midnight when the tides were high, 1230, something like that. 
and and we got there and and motor was at half power i was like all right well at least we have motor at least we got to the camping place at least we're going to be able to be where we're supposed to be do our deal for for a couple days and when we decided to come back out we tested the motor the night before it's always good to try to be prepared like Mm -hmm. a boy scout girl (laughs) scout and um and it seemed to be working fine and we got in about one o'clock it was high tide um, a couple of days later 12 30 one o'clock it's high tide middle of the day and started to make our way out it was working but it was still half power so mm-hmm. we're still going two three i doubt it was four miles an hour but <laughs> like three. trolling basically yeah it was it was going slow and it was in a little john boat not that seaworthy still <laughs> in alligator infested territory <laughs> and uh and and the crazy thing was I started complaining again about how slow we were going. Yeah, I did that. I did that. Mm-hmm. I was complaining. I was like, God. and the guy that was, you know, doing the gas and, and back there <laughs> on the motor, I was like, hey, turn the turn the thing. You turned it the other night, and that's when it went to half power. And and I was like, crank down on that one lever back there. And I was like, see if that's it. Like maybe it's a maybe it's a gear thing, and it's just not in the right gear for no. whatever. I don't know anything about motors, <laughs> so I'm just complaining. He goes to crank down on what it's a great suggestion on my part, <laughs> knowing all that I don't know about motors. <laughs> so he goes to crank down on this on this thing, and the engine goes, Wah! <laughs> and we stop moving. <laughs> and then we could not get this thing to go back into gear at all. So the tab was coming in, and so now it's pushing us back towards where we came from. Mm. We're in the middle of nowhere alligator infested water i'm sure i'm tasty to an alligator (laughs) and and the universe was like cool you don't like that half speed cool no speed how about that Mm. how about that and then all of a sudden what i was just complaining about i was wishing for with all my heart Mm. isn't that funny Mm. how what we complain about when your perspective changes I was going no speed. Actually, I was going reverse speed as the tide was taking me back to where we came from because the tide was coming in to up an, uh, up a tributary where a river was and you could only get in there during high tides. and let, So it was really fascinating scenario. Um, and now we're in a rescue situation. No way to get out. Can't paddle out of that. Can't paddle. The tide was pushing us yeah. back this way. I didn't want to get stuck in the mud because when it came pushed us back that way and then went back out, We'd be sitting on, on yeah. you know, mud. And you might say, well, you could just get out and drag the boat. Sure, if you can walk and move in chest high mud <laughs> any time of the day, that would have worked. <laughs> um, in alligator infested territory. Yeah. So, all of a sudden, I was I realized we were talking about it later, and I was like, oh my gosh, I complained about my situation, and my situation changed. Mm. And then all. Every time to a T, I was wishing for that which I just complained for because my perspective shifted, right? Mm-hmm. Complain about the food you're eating, great, no food, try no food. And I was the, you're going to laugh about this, I was the ingenious one <laughs> that before we left the camp, I was like, yeah, we got two gallons of water. We don't need two gallons of water. <laughs> we don't need two gallons of water. We only need a gallon of water. We're headed right back. We're five miles away from civilization and been able to get all the water we need because I couldn't drink the brackish salt freshwater mix mm-hmm. there. Well, so I decided to wash my feet off <laughs> with, <laughs> with our survival water. <laughs> Awesome. I didn't think I was going to be in a survival situation. And so then we only had a gallon left. Um, I would have used that other gallon, but one of the guys we were with was like, <laughs> hey, bro, are you <laughs> washing your hands and feet with our survival water? Standing next like, to the ocean. Yeah, <laughs> standing next to me, standing next to tons of water you can wash your feet with. I'm dumping survival water on You're my in feet. the water dumping fresh water on yourself. <laughs> so... It's salty. The moral to this story is don't go camping with me. Yeah. yeah. Um, Noted. No, but, but think about it. Think about it in your life. The times in your life where you're down on your situation. That story sounds ridiculous, but that story is literally so many people's story. In today. Life. Yeah. Today. today. Yeah, There's yeah. people that are complaining. Mm-hmm. They're driving around in a beat up car and they're in a sales job and they're trying to make it. And they're complaining about how they look pulling up in this beat up jalopy. Mm-hmm. Guess what? <laughs> Try walking. <laughs> 
<laughs> try riding your bike and then complain about the bike and try it when both those bike tires go flat and you got to push the bike and walk. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like hate your boss. How about no boss? How about no boss? Cause you how have about no, no job. job? You have no job. <laughs> complain about, complain about your work situation and then, um, yeah. try to get a paycheck without a company. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was just a, a, um, it was just another example of, and this was immediate. Mm -hmm. Like it was so cool that it happened to me because the feedback loop from the universe was immediate. Like the law of reciprocity worked like that. Mm -hmm. And it scared me a little. Yeah. Um, it worked so fast it was frightening. And literally when that motor, we couldn't get it going anywhere. Oh, it would start. It ran, yeah. but it would, it would, it would not like turn the propeller. You. Oh, it taunted me. It laughed at and me. And you hear some people say, like, oh, you know, everything happens in threes. Well, it's like, yeah, if you want it to. If, if you, you create it. If you, yeah. If you put that in motion, of course, your dishwasher went out, then your dryer went out, and of course, you're waiting for the third thing to go out. Yeah, you're like, you're like, God, the dishwasher went out again. <laughs> what else could go wrong everything in my life? Everything always breaks. Yeah, and then yeah. your car, and then, and then your car and, won't start. Yeah, and the second thing, <laughs> your dishwasher doesn't work. Great, I got to wash dishes by hand. What else is going to go wrong in my life? <laughs> try washing your clothes by hand. You know? <laughs> the universe is going to be like, well, try this one. This yeah. is funny. This is funny, you ungrateful swine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what the universe is laughing at you and going. But but if you looked at it with gratitude, like I could have been mm -hmm. like, man, I'm so grateful that we're able to get out of here. We mm -hmm. may be going two or three miles an hour. It may take us an hour and 15 minutes to get to where we're going. At least we're but, going. Yeah. But we were moving and going, but my complaining actually triggered. I only, I not only did I add the complaining in, mm -hmm. but it triggered an action of me ask of me trying to be a know-it-all solve it on something I don't have a clue about. Yeah. And it triggered him to turn that and break whatever it was mm -hmm. that we couldn't, we couldn't get it to work then. So, and so, you know, from, um, you know, sales Wolves podcast. So we have a lot of people that are in sales that are, that are listening to this and that are watching this. And so, you know, that may sound like a crazy story, but just think back to last week, week before, maybe a couple of months ago, any time that you've had a bad run at it mm -hmm. <laughs> in sales. And what was your thought process during that, during that stint of time? Like, what were you like, start to think about what you were thinking about during that time. Mm -hmm. When you had that bad day, did you start saying things to yourself like, Man, every time I blank and man, this always blank and just kind of fill in those gaps and thinking like, was I genuinely negative or optimistic about what was going on during yep. that time? And of course you had another bad day. And of course that turned into a bad week, which turned into a bad month, which literally can destroy someone's career sure. unless you figure out a way to correct it. Or do you have a short memory? Um, do you have these things that happen and someone doesn't buy or you lose an account and you think, well, man, I'm so grateful for the accounts that I do have. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity, uh, to go out tomorrow. And, you know, when we, when I first got turned on to this whole idea of the law of attraction, it was our business partner, Nathan, um, told me about the secret and which is really your entry level into the law of attraction. And there's, you know, way, way, way further depths or higher levels of understanding. But with the secret, I remember for a year, I would wake up every morning and when I was in the shower, I would say out loud to myself, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to work hard and make great money. I would say that every day in the shower, like, thank you for the opportunity to work hard and make great money. And the work hard was the important part. Like I'm grateful to have to go and, and just work 14, 16, 18 hours a day that mm -hmm. I get the opportunity to go do that and make great money. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter if the day before was just the absolute worst day in the entire world, did not want to go back to that same place, did not want to talk to those same people. I was grateful for the opportunity to work hard and make great money. And it just put me in this mindset mm -hmm. in the very first thing in the morning to walk into that day feeling unstoppable no matter what happened. And so when these things happen and you feel that negativity coming, it's you almost have to trick yourself. And it seems silly, like, well, if I'm tricking myself, is it is it real? It is real. And well, gratitude is real. Yeah, period. yeah. And so just start thinking of those things that you are grateful for. And I love what you said about you know the things that you're complaining about ultimately ending up wishing for. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, it's all about perspective because every single person that is listening to this or watching this, that means you have an 
you know, a smartphone Mm -hmm. or a computer, which means you're in the top, you know, tenth of a percent uh, in the world's population. And the reality is the things that you complain about on a daily basis, there's someone in some part of the world that is praying for that Praying scenario. for that situation. And so it's all about perspective. And so you can look at every situation in your life and complain about how it could be better, mm-hmm. or you could look at those exact same situations and be grateful for that, the, for that it's not worse worse, grateful for what you have, grateful um, from where you've been to where you've um, gotten. And just that little bit of attitude shift by implementing gratitude on a, on a sometimes hourly basis Mm -hmm. and being cognizant of those things. And, And I remember, you know, for me, when this switch happened and I was on this upward trajectory in my life, it was almost for, it was almost to me a, a fear that if I allowed any negativity in, Mm -hmm. that it would somehow steal this like positivity and this momentum and this, this, um, you know, upper trajectory that I was on. And so I guarded, guarded it fiercely. Like Mm -hmm. anytime things were negative, I would turn it off. And, you know, I'm talking to someone on the phone and they would start to get negative. And I would literally say, Hey man, I got a call coming in. I'll just hang up. And like never going back <laughs> and like, because it was negative people, negative influences, negative, like the news, TV, anything that was negative just started, you know, deleting that stuff and eliminating that stuff from my life. Cause I literally felt as though I'm like, I'm so grateful for where I, for where I am right now. I'm going to allow nothing right. to, to steal it because that's ultimately what it does is you're allowing it. You're like giving it the keys and then complaining for it taking something from you. Right. It's like, here's the keys to my house and then complaining when your TV has gone. Right. <laughs> it's, it's literally what you're doing by allowing those negative thoughts to, to creep in. And it happens, it happens fast. And, uh, and it, can it can happen be, very quickly. You use the sales example and, mm-hmm. and that's awesome, but it can be anything in your life. Like oh, yeah. the example I was thinking of, it could be a stay at home dad who is trying to feed their kid and their kids throwing food and pitching a temper tantrum. Like, gosh, can it, can it, can this get any worse? Mm. Yeah, they can get diarrhea in that same seat and throw <laughs> up on you. Like I promise yeah. you, it can get worse. Sure. Everything can get worse. Um, and so it's just being grateful for the opportunities you have to prove that you can handle the situations you're in. Yeah. And and those will not always be great situations. They won't. You're never going to have a life where every situation you face is great. Like he said, he would have had a terrible day in sales, but the gratitude to go back out there, the gratitude to be in a position to, to make something happen on a daily basis, that's your choice. Um, the, the, one of the guys I went with, he sent me this because we were talking about this gratitude stuff and it's one of my favorite guys, David. And, uh, and he sent this right here. Um, He said, well, and he lives in the D.C. area. He said, well, I used to bitch about my metro ride to work. Last month, the universe said, cool, metro shut down that line, and I had to start doing a series of buses. (laughs) 25 minutes longer commute each way. That's an hour 45 each way for him. And, and, And he was like, crap, I missed the metro, right? (laughs) Complained about, got it taken away, and now he misses what he was complaining about. Then he says, well, you get used to crap. Yesterday, I was complaining about the bus being a little slower than usual. Bam! Issue on 395 shuts down buses for a few hours. I normally walk right up to the. I normally walk right up in the Pentagon Express line, and the universe says, "Not today, son." <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was. Yeah. It was. He sent me a picture of that. Long. I mean, that's that a long line. That sucks. <laughs> but. So that's a, it's a funny example. We can laugh about that, but you need to analyze your life and the way that you operate because I don't know very many people that operate in gratitude Mm -hmm. and gratitude is the offspring of love. And I believe that everybody has, has love in their heart and things have happened to you. And what you've done is you've built a wall around your heart with hate. You've used bricks, hate, anger, bitterness, frustration. Um, at whatever happened in your life, you've built a wall around your heart, the bricks of hate and bitter and frustration. You've actually built that wall yourself. You've used what was done to you or the poor decisions you made or whatever. You've used those circumstances to build that wall. And I believe that everybody's heart is full of love, but that love cannot be expressed through gratitude with that, with that shield that you've put up. Mm -hmm. And so you need to analyze your life and your responses, man. When somebody cuts you off, do you flip out? I promise you it's not, 
You can tell the size of a person by the size of the thing that makes them angry. Somebody cutting you off, no big deal. Try getting in a five car collision. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, there there's always something worse. You need to be grateful that you saw them, you didn't hit them, and be like, dang, that person must be in a big hurry, man. They must something must be wrong. They must something they have to get somewhere quick. Mm-hmm. No big deal. Don't take that and put another brick on that wall around your heart. Your heart's full of love. Let people feel it. Be grateful. Grateful for where you are and the ability that you have to change where you are by operating out of gratitude and love and putting action behind that instead of action behind the complaining, which is born out of that wall of bitterness, hate, anger, frustration, disappointment. And one of my favorite things that Gary Vaynerchuk ever said was, he said, complaining is the quickest tell of a non-winner, which is a really nice way of saying of a loser. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Which is true. It's like, if you just look at it from a business perspective, there is zero ROI to complaining whatsoever. And if you actually grasp what we're telling you today, you'll understand that there is such a negative ROI to complaining that it's really just not even worth risking it. Um, So guys, with that, uh, this is episode 123 of the Sales Wolves podcast. (laughs) As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. My name is Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Sales Wolves. Wolves.